faster than you put things in the middle, there's like 10 things wrong with that. You have that was said. Nobody heard that. It's, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's Somebody else. Okay, hands up. Yeah. But why? Why why is that important? Because it's like the you use blink for like putting in certification of arrays instead of being played in random areas. Whoa, okay. So you're talking about the, the, the bonus thing that I taught that was like I think it's a little bit too confusing. I'm not asking that. Stacks. Remember, not linked lists, I didn't say anything, but stacks and cues. Remember that's what we learned last time. We learned stacks and cues. And then at the end, I was like, well, this is easy, y'all crushed it. Let's do this harder thing. Okay, rewind to the easy thing, not the hard thing, the easy thing. Why did I teach you that easy thing? Does nobody remember like boarding an airplane? Nobody remembers that example? Yeah. Why, what was that, what, what were we saying about that? Right, okay, sure, access, but there are a lot of things that access different things one by one, right? You could go to Baskin Robbins and you could one by one try all the flavors, right? What, what, is, what is a stack and what is a queue? I'm actually not asking that question, because it doesn't matter what they are. No matter, what, what I want to remind, what I would like to know is that the thing that I taught you, you remember. <laughs> Please do me a favor and write it down or something, so that when I ask you, I know it's been two weeks and that's a long time, a lot has happened, but like we spent like what fifteen minutes last time on like the why. What why did we learn it? Um, um to like represent things in a real world. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> what is your name? Alessandra. Alessandra. I'm not gonna call you by your outfit because thank you so much, <laughs> Alessandra, for remembering the thing that I taught you. Okay, say it again really loud. I don't want everyone to say it after Alessandra says it. Um, it, it represents things in the real world. Okay, right, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have, I have two good students, okay? Oh, no. 38 students. <laughs> Thank you in the back with the glasses. Okay, I want everyone to do it. Ready? Why did we learn stacks and cues? What? Practicing things in the real world, right? There are things in the real world that are ordered first in, first out. And there are things in the real world that are ordered first in, last out. Right? When you put a plate in your pantry, and you stack up your plates, and then you go to bed, and you wake up in the morning, and you grab the plate, you got in the last one that you put on. That's, that's first in, last out. Right? When you wait in line, and think, right? First in, last out. It's the same. First in, last out, last in, first out, second. They're the same. Right? First in, first out, or last in, last out, are also the same. So there's, a, there's two different things, right? First in, first out, and first in, last out. Okay? And first in, first out is the same as last in, last out. Right? Just, just think about it. Right? If, you, if I had a stack of things... The first thing that I put in is going to be the last thing I take out. The last thing that I put in is the first thing I take out. It's the same, right? So why do we learn it? Because it represents something in the real world. Because when you're writing programs, so this is the feedback that I got, and I'm trying to do it well, okay? Which is, I don't want you to leave this class being like, Ben taught me some shit, I don't know what it was, you know, but I'm trying to get good at it. It's like, no, I want you to know, like, oh, this is useful. This is good. This thing that I'm teaching you is not just, I want to get a job and get paid more. It's like, no, this is actually something you're going to use every day, right? Because you wait in lines every day. You stack shit up every day. You put shit on a stack every day, UPS. right? What? UPS. UPS, right? You put stuff in the truck, right? You put stuff in the truck, and you close the truck, and you drive around, and the stuff you take out is going to be the last, the first thing you take out is going to be the last thing you put in, because it's going to be the back of the truck, right? Okay. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> right? Okay, so we'll see that that's not, that like in real world situations, there are more complicated cases, right? When you're waiting in line at an airport, or when you're stacking plates, so just simple cases, what if it's a more complicated case where you need to get something from the middle? 
We're going to learn those things. I'm going to teach them to you. But I want you to remember why we're learning them, okay? And we're learning it because, not just because it's some type of self that I was t told to teach you, but because actually, like Alessandra said, Alessandra, Alessandra said, they represent things in the real world. You're going to use, you're going to write programs that help people. Right? You can write programs that gets people a car. You can write programs that delivers people food. You can write programs that finds people a friend. You can write programs that 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 uh, identify people that you could go on a date with. You can write programs that help people. In all of these programs, there will be situations where you're going to want to stack. There are going to be situations where you're going to want a queue. There are situations where you're going to want an array or a link list or an object, and you need to know. Which situation is the right situation? And that's why I'm teaching all of this stuff, okay? Alright? Okay? So we learn stats, we learn cues, and we learn arrays. Arrays are going to come up a lot today because link lists are only interesting in their comparison to arrays. I think if you didn't know an array, a link list would be like, what the fuck do I ever mean? This thing is so weird. But now that you know an array, and we're going to learn more about arrays than we've ever learned before. So in order for me to teach you link lists, I'm going to have to teach you more about arrays. It's some stuff that I taught you last time, but it sounds like it was confusing. So we're going to go over it again. No worries. It's okay. Some of this hard stuff, it's, it's, it's good that we teach it again and again and again. Because you need to hear it a few times before you get it, because it's really hard. Okay. Ready. So we have talked about these data structures. They represent things in the real world. We like to store things in order, right? A stack has a particular order, right, where the thing on the top matters, and as you put stuff on, it like pushes the thing on the top down to be low. A queue has an order; things get added to the front, remove from the, or added to the back, remove from the front. A linked list also has an order, um, and <clears throat> in many ways, it's very similar to the other stuff we talked about. You want to put stuff in, you can put it in. You want to remove stuff, you can remove stuff. Um, it's really common. It's commonly used for any kind of ordered data, like, oh, I would like to store all the names of everyone in the class. I can put it in an array, I can put it in a linked list. Those are two ordered data structures that we can use. Group of fruits, to-dos, etc. So arrays in JavaScript are your Swiss Army knife, right? It can do anything. So um, arrays in the low-level language, so there's going to be a little bit of a disconnect here between what JavaScript is and like what the word array means in JavaScript, and what the word array means in computer science. And if I don't specify, I'm going to be talking computer science. But sometimes I'll be like, in JavaScript, blah, blah, blah. But if I don't say in JavaScript, I'm going to be talking computer science. Arrays and linked lists are basically the same thing in JavaScript, but they're not at all the same thing in computer science. Okay? Um, so for the most part, especially when it comes to if you're doing an interview for a job, you're doing whiteboard, that is a computer science interview. They are testing you as to how much of a computer scientist you are. Can you hang out with computer scientists, speak their language, and be a member of their team as a computer scientist? That might not be what you do in your day job, but that's usually what the interview is about. So I'm going to be teaching you that language, okay? So arrays are the most primitive thing that exists in the computer. That's because your computer has random access memory in it. Random access memory means, hey, I have, what, this machine I think has 16 gigs of RAM. Probably some of your machines have 4, 8, 16, maybe even 32 gigs. That's like, you have a ton of space in your machine that you can access any part of it at random at the same speed. They go of one, constant time. Right? That's a feature of RAM. RAM is built, that's why it's called RAM. It's built so that you can access any bit of it at constant time. And that's what gives us the ability, if you have an array of size of a billion, and I want to get the 500 millionth element, how long does it take? I have an array. I have an array that's huge, a billion elements. And I want to access the element right in the middle. How long does it take? What'd you say? Of what? Does everybody agree or disagree? Is he wrong? I think it's O of M. I think it's linear time to find the array, to find an element within an array. 
Zero? Who's wrong? Which one is wrong? Me? Hat or no hat? That's the question. Let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. Raise your hand. You have to raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, you're kicked out of the class. <laughs> you gotta raise your hand, so just choose one if you don't know. Is accessing the 500 millionth element of a billion length array constant time? Raise your hand. Okay. Linear time? Raise your hand. Okay, so most people, except for the three of you, agree that it's constant time. It is constant time. So this is, the linear time would be a linguist, and we'll learn that in a second. And the reason why it's constant time is because, if you'll see in this picture here, the data in an array, and I want to use a pen so I can write on the whiteboard, just, there, everyone was just whiteboard the pen, just like in this box. In this box, yeah. Is that, like, we draw arrays like this, right, where we're like, this is element zero, this is element one, this is element two, this is element three, this is element 500,000, Right? And there's like a couple more elements. This is only, you know, there's like a bajillion elements. Um, this data is contiguous. And what we mean by that is that they're smushed up against each other with no gaps. Right? So you should think about it like um, a building. Think about RAM like a building, like the Empire State Building. Right? And you've got the Empire State Building, it's really, really, really tall. And there are a lot of floors on it, right? Now, if someone's like, go to the 75th floor, you're like, okay, I'm going to climb the stairs to the 75th floor. Um, if you had, like, a camera, let's say, a camera, and you were outside, you were outside of the building, and you had a camera, and you were like, hey, I would like to take a picture of the 66th floor, whatever. You just point your camera right at the 66th floor and take a picture, you did it. Then someone's like, now I want to take a picture of the 33rd floor. You just angle your camera down, and bam, you take a picture of a different floor. You don't need to count from, the, or you as a human, probably need to count from the bottom. One, two, three, blah, 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 all the way up, because you're a human and you're dumb. A computer is built, it's literally built, it is like, has the, the metal is constructed such that if you tell it, hey, I would like to, to take a picture of the 66th floor, it's like, bam, I know exactly where that is because there's no gaps between any of these floors. I know how high up, right? I know how high up the floor is. The floor is zero. It's the ground, it's, uh, it's at um, water level, right? It's at sea level. And each, each floor is 10 feet, right? So the 66th floor is at 660 feet. So the computer's like doing this math, and it can do that math instantly. It doesn't need... It doesn't, if the, if the building is the size of a billion, it doesn't take it longer to do math, right? It's just as long to multiply 10 and 20 as it is to multiply 100 million by 20 million for a computer. So it does the math and it says, oh, okay, I know that each flight is 10, 10 feet, which is not very tall, built, not very tall from the ceiling. It's like it's uh, 20 feet. Uh, it's 20 foot ceilings, right? And I'm going to do the 60 to 4, so it's 66 times 20, and whatever the hell that is, I don't know. I'm not a computer, 66 times 9, right, it'll tell us, it's 1,320, so it, so it moves its camera to 1,320 feet, and it takes a picture, and it can do that in constant time, if you give me a tall building or a short building, the amount of time it takes for me to do the math, to say, how tall is each floor, how many floors up do you want me to take the picture, I move the camera to that angle, if it's a really tall building, it doesn't take that long to like move it up. The angle is quick, right? And it can take a picture, and it's constant time. Is this an analogy helping? Is this a helpful analogy at all? Okay, here I got some nods. Okay, I'm trying to because like the reality is that humans, as humans, we think of stuff as like a lot of stuff is linear for us because no matter all, no matter how much information we have in our head, we can't just like instantly jump to something. But a computer can instantly jump to something in the way they can do math, right? Is that like ten times ten is a hundred? Right? If you can just do it in your head. 10 times 10 is 100. Like a little child might be like 10 times 10. They're like 10. Okay, well, 10 times 1 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 3, and you're like, kid, you're so dumb. And someday <laughs> you're going to be a smart adult, and you're going to be able to do it in your head, right? The computer is that smart adult where it's like, I can do math quickly, and once I've done the math, 
If I have something that I know there's no gaps between this data, right? If there were gaps, would this work? No. Right, because it would not be 1,320 foot. Like a 664, would it be at 1,320 feet up? It wouldn't be, right? Because maybe there's a, maybe the, maybe the 58th floor is, or the 13th floor is like a gap floor. So it's actually um, 20 feet lower, right? Because they, it skips the 13th floor or something, because it's one of those superstitious places. Or it's like the 55th floor is a triple height space because they have like a restaurant there and they have like a tall ceiling. That would fuck up the algorithm, right? It wouldn't work. So the array is this exact same way. And so I guess one, one other piece that's important is remember how we talked about this, uh, this thing is at um, zero, it's at uh, uh, water level, thank you. Imagine if I put this building on the top of a mountain. It would still be constant time because I would just add a fixed number. It's like, oh, it starts at a thousand feet, right? So then it's just two thousand three hundred twenty feet, right? And so the computer is just like, oh, what is it? It's just the height of the zero floor, right? The height of the ground floor plus twenty times the number of floors, right? And that is literally how arrays work in your computer. When you make an array, this exists somewhere in RAM. And your RAM is like eight gigabytes, right? So eight gigabytes is is okay. Eight e nine. That's not very helpful. <laughs> uh, let's do it in e nine. Python. Um, so it's like I think eight gigabytes is to to the to the 32 is, um, is one megabyte, one, two, is 30 or something? Wait, it's like a kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, um, six times eight. So this is, um, I can make it bigger. So this is how many like locations there can be in your computer. So when you have eight gigabytes of RAM, the truth is actually even more complicated. But just pretending you get eight gigabytes of RAM, that's like saying you your RAM, your computer has an array that goes from zero to that number. Eight thousand five hundred eight nine nine like eight bajillion, whatever it is. It's, like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's eight billion five eight billion five hundred and ninety-eight million nine hundred and thirty-four thousand five hundred and ninety-two. Right? We, these are called addresses. So think about it like I call I, I call it the floor of a building because it's like this nice linear thing. But they call them addresses. So think about it like a really long street where each on that street are buildings, and the first building is building zero, the next building is building one, building two, building three, building four, right? And they go all the way up to building eight billion five hundred and, and eighty nine million. So if I want an array of size ten, what happens is somewhere in this giant array of RAM. Let's say I address 10 million, right? At this address 10 million, we say, okay, we're gonna make an array of size 10. So from 10 million to 10 million and 10, at those addresses, your array lives, right? Because your computer has eight gigabytes of RAM, but you're not using it for your program. We have lots of programs, right? From 11 million to 12 million, Chrome is using that shit. Chrome uses a lot of RAM. Right? And from 11 million to 11 million 100 is, I don't know, Slack. And from 11 million 500, you know, you understand what I'm saying? It's like different parts of your RAM are going to be used by different programs. And so you're writing a little program right now, right? You're writing a little JavaScript. And you want an array, it's going to give it to you, it doesn't matter where it is. But the computer can get to any area of this place instantly. And it can do math instantly, right? So it can go to this address instantly. Like, oh, I want to get an array of index five. It doesn't go array zero, one, two, three, four, five. It says 10 million plus five times the size of your array elements. Right? It's just like 1,000 plus 66 times the height of your floor. Right? It's the same thing. Are we following this analogy? <laughs> what questions do you have? I feel like this is complicated. 
Give me your questions. You said it added subtracted and all that. Is it actually doing that? Or yes. Is it no, it's it absolutely doing that. So it's doing that. Someday, in 10 years, we're going to be hanging out, drinking beers, and you're going to be like, I learned C the other day. And they'll be like, no way. And they're like, dude, in C, there are, there's no such thing as arrays. In C, actually, if you do the math yourself, you say, go to this place plus K times the size of my own, and that's how I get it. And like, you do the syntax where you're like, array, square bracket, K, but actually, under the hood, in C, it's doing the math. And generally, you'll actually do the math yourself. C is an ugly thing, is that you, you'll probably never want to write. All of, all of this nice stuff where you're like, array, square bracket, 10, is a really nice thing for you to use. You know, oh, I'm getting the, the 11th element of this array. Um, that's what we call syntactic sugar. It's something really nice and sweet that we, as the compilers, the authors of JavaScript, the authors of whatever programming language you're writing, did to make your life better so you don't have to do this fucking math. Let the language do it for you. It's getting translated. Um, okay, cool. So anyway, the important feature that we learned is that arrays are contiguous with no gaps. And that contiguousness is what allows you to get constant time access for any element. Because the computer just goes to the start of it, adds the uh, number of elements you want to go to, even if it's 500 million, it can add 10 million plus 500 million easily. You just add them together, you get 510 million. That was really quick, right? It goes, and then it goes 510 million times, or like uh, 10 million plus 500 million times the size of your element. Let's say your element is size of one, just for convenience. And it would go to 510 million. We'd be like, okay, 510 million, that's right over here. And then we get the value out of it. We'd say, oh, it's the thing you want. Constant time. Okay, great. A linked list has gaps, okay? Um, and that's the, fun, that's the fundamental difference. Question? You're shaking your head because you have a question. Take your life. It's a gap, so it's like, You're shaking your head, you're like, it's like this fucking linked list. Thing. <laughs> no, it's cool, it's cool. And the point is, is that you need to know both because you need to know a queue and a stack because they're, you know, you don't you don't take your plates out of your shelf in a queue. You don't wait in line at the airport in a stack, right? The last person to show up in the airline, they, they don't wait until the last person to show up running through security, they get on the plane first, <laughs> right? Like, right, like you need to know both because both things exist in the real world, right? Please don't forget that. So it's just like with arrays and linguists. Both, you need to know both. They both of them exist in the real world. There are situations where you're going to know the size of your data. You're going to have a fixed size. And there are situations where you're not going to know the size of your data. You're going to have a variable size. Fixed size is going to be better for arrays. Variable size is going to be better for things. I'll come back to that. Anyway, so, so check it out. So this grid is the same as this line. This is just representing it in the grid. Imagine if it's like, um, imagine if I just said like, Hey, everything from 0 to 100 is the first street, and then everything from 100 to 200 is the second street, and everything from 200 to 300 is the third street. And that's actually how RAM actually works. Like if you look at a picture of a stick of RAM, um, you'll see that it has these little pins on it. See, like this is actually what it is. So what this is is that this little black box is all is like one gig of RAM memory. So this, this, let's say this is an 8 gig stick. I bet you there are 8 things on it. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? So this is gig 1, gig 2, gig 3, gig 4. So everything from 0 to uh, 1 gigabyte is in this box. Everything from two, uh, from 1 to 2 gigabytes is in this box. From 2 to 3 is in this box. And then if you look inside this box, they are divided into 8. And if you look inside each of those divisions of 8, those are divided into 8. And that's just how like, a computer, this is just how the metal is like lasered on with the laser. And it gives it the ability to say, oh, I want something from this random place. And it just knows, like, oh, I just know that it's going to be in this box, this half, or this half, or this box. I know that because I can look at the number and I can do math instantly. And I go and I find there it is. So that's why this, um, that's why this like, uh, box representation is actually a very good one. Right? Um, so as you can see, so in this, in this situation, imagine that we had an array of size 3. 
And the first element was the word brunch. The second element was the word bocce, for some reason. And the third element was the word tea. These are three very weird things to put in there, right? But the important thing is that the next thing after that is some other thing, right? It's not your array. Your array is of size three. Zero, one, and two are brunch, bocce, and tea. And there is no element four. And the next thing is like some other array, like, like you know, it's, who knows what it is. Maybe it's an array of menu items. And it's like, you know, bacon, egg, and cheese, and whatever, um, is in this other array. If I wanted to add something to my array, I wanted to add an element, it wouldn't fit. So if I was using an array and I wanted to add it, what I would need to do is I would need to copy all three elements over to a new array of size four. And then I would be able to put in the element. How long would that take? What would be the performance of that operation? Anything? Me? Yes, you. So you're saying if, if I have this array here and since I can't add something to it, I need to make a new array of, of size that array three plus one four somewhere else. And then I need to copy all the elements over. You think I can do that in constant time? How could I do that? That's pretty fast. So it's linear time. And because you have to copy every element, there's no shortcut. Right? Like, I have to copy this element, brunch. Then I have to copy bocce. Then I have to copy tea. And then I can write my fourth element. Do you see why that's linear time? It's like, I want you to think about it like, hey, if I had to do this myself, how long would it take? And another way to think about it is like, do I have to do something for every element? Then it's definitely not constant, right? So it's only constant when you're not having to put it in every element that you already have. Yeah, it's, an array is constant to read. To read some element, right? Because it's like it's like the analogy of taking a picture, right? Of like, I can just like, I know, oh, I want to take a picture of 64. I know each four is 22 feet tall. I do 22 times 66. I get the height, I go to that height, I take a picture, boom, done. That's constant. But if someone's like, hey, I'd like you to add a new floor to this building, you'd be like, oh, shit, that's not going to be constant. Because this building is fixed in size. Building is maybe a bad analogy here because you can actually just add floors to top of buildings. This is a bad analogy. Um, but in this particular picture, you can see that there's something here, this, this fourth location, there's something already there. I can't put it there. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain? Yeah. So it's like, imagine that you have a, a street. And on that street, maybe not a building, but a street. And on that, the reason I like the building is because I can quickly just take a picture of a floor. A street, it's like, it's hard to conceptualize, instantly teleporting to some random place on the street. But alas, that's what computers do. But I think the street analogy is nice when we think about addresses. Right? Imagine there's a building at address zero and a building at address one. But there's an empty lot at address two, three, four, and five. You following so far? And there's a building at six. So I can fit an array of size four, two, three, four, and five. I can fit it right in there, slot it right in. I put, I put my, my four buildings, brunch, bocce, tea, and coffee, right in there. Wham, it works. Now I want to add a new one. Brunch, bocce, tea, coffee, and milk. But I can't fit it in there because there's something on either side. So I need to move all these buildings over to some other place where there's more and there's more uh, adjacent empty lots. That's not going to be constant time. I can't move all these buildings at once. I have to move one building at a time. Does that happen in small machines? Maybe it's not. It's like. Like, I, want, I wonder if we had like a prop, if that would help if there was like a prop. Yeah, I think we can use this example of shaping things kind of saying hi and then adding the name saying. Right, that was, that was talking about performance, like n squared, right? So, so what this is, is like, this is, this is a physical structure feature of a computer. The computer has in it RAM, 
RAM is capable of random access, meaning any element, I can access it instantly. You give me an element, I can get it. Okay? Think about each of these elements like a box. A box that I can put something in. Right? I feel like I already lost it. You got your, you're still with me. It's a box you can put something in, right? And so there are lots of things in your computer. Chrome, Slack, um, I don't know, what else is on people's computers? Photos, you know, um, Visual Studio Code, right? Your Messenger app, a, a Spotify, right? All this stuff, it's all in here. Everything is in RAM on your computer. And some of it's taking up a shitload of RAM, like, like Chrome is using like gigabytes and gigabytes of RAM. So that, those things that are used are these gray boxes, see? They're used up, they're in use by someone else. You see that? Chrome is using them, you can't use them, okay? And you make an array, array of size three. It fits into RAM somewhere. But it's got, right at the end of it, the next element after the last element of your array is RAM that's used by Chrome. If you want to add one element to that array, you can't, because the space at the end of the array is used up. So in order to add an element to that array, you must copy the entire array over to a new place in RAM. It doesn't matter where. It could be a million away. It could be right one away. It doesn't matter. But some, some other place in RAM where there is enough space, not three slots, but four slots, right? And I need to copy every single element over. And that operation will be linear time. And it's not linear time because I told you. It's linear time because you can figure it out yourself. I'm going to tell it to you because I think it's hard to figure it out for yourself. And you don't have that intuition yet. But it's linear time because of the fundamental feature of the computer. That the computer can't move 10 pieces of data at the same time. It can only move one piece of data at the same time. So it moves brunch, it writes brunch. Then it moves bocce. Then it moves T, and then it can add the fourth thing. So instead of being constant time to add an element, it took linear time because it had to move the entire array to a different part of the memory. Question? No, no question. Um, maybe have you tried maybe showing us that activity monitor? Sure. Do that. Let me see if there's a ton of. On uh, random usage, Google Chrome is like using a freaking kill that. Well, what is this GPU? I wonder which tab is using the GPU. We'll tell you what is it on the It crashed. I don't know, Google Chrome is just. Nothing, yeah, I don't know. See, I just stole it. Anyway, it's free up a game and half a gram. Um, so yeah, activity monitor. What do you want to see? This is showing us how many threads there are, which is not something you don't know about yet. What ports are in use, not something you should know about. The process ID, not something you should know about. The amount of memory in use, this is what we're talking about, right? We're saying this Go PLS program is probably this thing here, which I can kill. So um, this Go PLS program has a gigabyte of memory allocated to it, meaning the sum total of arrays that it has allocated in on my computer is a gigabyte, which is two to the thirty, which is like a billion. Right? Yeah, it's a billion. It's a billion. Is that helpful? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think, like, the thing is, is that there, th there's a leap that you need to make here. Like, there is a, there is an understanding that you need to do, and it's not like it's not a, um, it's not something that you're going to be able to memorize. It's not something that you're going to be able to intuit. It's something that you just have to um, absorb as like. I don't know, what, what, what's, an, what's an analogy of like something that, um, yeah, like, like have you ever been rock climbing? It's like, okay, 
the, the way that like the ropes work in rock climbing, it's like complicated. Or whatever. You don't need to understand it perfectly or whatever, but at some point you need to just trust like this rope is going to hold you up. You're going to let go of the wall, and the rope will like keep you up. And you don't need to understand everything about it, but you need to understand like it must be tied on, it must be attached to the, the link at the top, the person below must be. There, there's a lot of details that you need to understand. You don't need to understand like the physics of tension, you don't need to understand the pulley mechanics. So with this, it's kind of the same. It's like, you need to know that your computer has RAM in it, and RAM, RAM can access an arbitrary bit at constant time. And like, with that information, everything else that I'm teaching you is actually, can be intuitive. It probably won't be intuitive, and that's okay. But technically, everything else is just built on that. Somebody, Alan Turing, was like, if I had this thing, what could I do? And over the past like 80 years, with just that, with just the fact that you have a computer that has RAM, that can access it a constant time, we have built iPhones, we have built projectors, we have built airplanes, we have built submarines, all of that stuff is built on that idea, okay? And so I'm gonna teach you all these things, but fundamentally, like, you must understand that your computer has RAM in it, RAM has data inside it, you can access that data at constant time, given that you know the address. You can compute the address if you know something about it, right? If I know that the array starts at 10 million, and I want to get the 50th element, then I know that I just go to 10 million 50. There it is. Constant time. Does that make sense? Okay? All right. So, this is where I link this comes in. Because we talked about adding and removing stuff, and if you have, if your if your memory is in use by all these programs all the time, it's really not very smart to use arrays, right? Because you're often growing things and shrinking things. You rarely know how big your data is. You rarely know how many users are going to sign into Facebook today. How many people are going to try and go on dates today? I have a good idea, but I don't know the exact number, right? And so I want to be able to grow and shrink, right? How many people are going to play chess today? How many moves are there going to be in this chess game? How many pages are you going to visit in Chrome, right? I need to be able to grow my stack for the back button as tall as it goes. You might be browsing in Chrome for 10 hours straight, right? So that can be really big. So I, I want to be able to do variable, variable size stuff. So link, link lists are the solution for that. This picture is key. So these numbers are the addresses, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, and then there's 4, 5, 6, up to 9 at the end. We don't see them. Black over 10. What these are saying is, if in, imagine if we had our data ordered still, right? The, the first element comes before the second element, the second element comes before the third, the third comes before the first. But it didn't exist in RAM in a contiguous way. They weren't immediately adjacent to each other, right? Because basically what you could do is, imagine a scavenger comes where I find the first clue. The first clue says, go to building 10. And I go to building 10, and I find the next clue, and it says, go to building 60. And I go to building 60, and I find the next clue, and it says, go to building 13. I'm like, well, that's back where I came from, that's fine. I go over there. That is what a linked list is. It is a collection of addresses in order, where each address has added the direction of the next address. And I like to draw it, I like to draw it like boxes with a pointer to the next box, with a pointer to the next box. And the word pointer is both a literal and figurative word. We're going to hear that word a lot um, over the course of these classes. And I want you to think of it like it's literally a pointer, like I'm pointing at it. It's over there. Right? But it's also a real thing in computers. Like there, there was a data type called a pointer. Like, you know, we talked about numbers and strings and arrays, and there's also a thing called a pointer. It's like a type, just like any other type. Anyway, so conceptually, are you following? Tell me, tell me, tell me your questions. Give me your questions about this concept. So you have items in there where you did physically live next to each other? Yes. Yeah. What happens? 
sorry? Before you need to stop. What do you mean causes what to stop? Like you have a linked list and keep going and keep going. What's before you need to stop? Okay, so so usually what it is is when the pointer is null. So, or like undefined in JavaScript. But you, I think JavaScript also has null. Yeah. No. So the pointer is null. So that's a common thing where you're like, you don't know how long this linked list is. You just go like, next, next, next. Oh, this next is null? Okay, I'm at the end. It's a good question. So basically, a line just sends an array is supposed to be the next to each other. Yes. But the pointer is null. Yeah. And then the linked list, since like they know there, there is like error. Yes. And so that's why with a linked list, when I want to get the fifth element, it's not constant time anymore. Because I don't know where that fifth element is. It could be anywhere. I have to go to the first element, follow the pointer to the second, follow the pointer to the third, follow the pointer to the fourth, which might be up here, follow the pointer to the fifth, and here I've gotten the fifth element. So how long did that take? What do you think? Linear, right? Because the bigger the link list, the longer it's going to take for me to find it because I have to keep going through. So it sounds kind of shitty, right? The array has constant time access. The link list has this linear time access. But the array has linear time resize. And the link list has constant time resize. Because I can just add a new element right here in the middle of nowhere, and I can just say last one and point to that. And imagine if I if I had some pointer to the last one, which we'll talk about in a second, if I could get to the last one in constant time, then I can add a new one at the end in constant time. Because I don't need to go through the whole list. I just need to go to the last one, update this next pointer to be a new node. Yes. Yeah, that's what I try to do here. Let's like, run up and down and all over the place. It can point anywhere. The computer does not give a shit. Question. So if I was like an array and down the last one, they just in the first one and the new one. What do you mean to add? No, no, no. Like, well, say you're adding down just to the last one, Wisconsin time, and it's similar to the last one. Yeah. yeah. And array would be like, well, like, instead of going to the last one, start with the new one again. To do what? To get the last element? What's the runtime to get the last element of an array? Constant. Is that a question? Um, so I don't know. Usually, like this, instead of an array, they're both constant to the last one. Because an array has linear time resize. Because when I want to resize it, imagine if I want to add an element to this array here. Coffee. I want to add coffee. It doesn't fit. Understand? Yeah, I'm saying, okay, I want to max it if the uh, array has the, uh, like, doesn't have the linear time to resize. But it does. Wait, what do you mean? If it doesn't, I don't understand the question. No, I mean, um, what makes it like most restricted from the array? Yes. How, uh, like, if you would have to add a fourth thing, you have to find the new, that, that's my question. You're, you're using a lot of words, some of which I, I don't understand. You say new one, what do you mean? Okay, and you put a space in memory. So, so when you add an element to a linked list, you need to create a new place in memory for your thing to be. The cool thing is it can be anywhere. So you just ask the computer, hey, give me some RAM. It's like, oh, here it is. It's constant. You get constant time, you got some RAM. Good for you. Then you point the last element to that new element. Blam, now it's a new element on the array. All of that was constant time. Oh, sorry, not array. Sorry, on a linked list. On a linked list. We can a linked list instead. Um, the equivalent of an array would be that you would need to find the new last element would need to be immediately after the previous last element. If you didn't have space for that, you need to copy it to a new place. That would take linear time. So I guess I don't understand. What is your question? 
my question was like, if the Pacific Network has to be out of a new place, a copy of the new place. Right. Yeah, that takes linear time. And it doesn't take linear time because I say it. It takes linear time because, think about it, how could it possibly move all this stuff in constant time? You have an array of sides of a million. And you want to add a million and one, right? But that million and one element is used up by Chrome. You're not going to kill Chrome just to get a single extra pixel on your art program that you're drawing on. Right? So it's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to copy all a million of those things to a new place. And, and a new place that's the size of the old place plus one. And then it will fit. And copying all that stuff, it's going to take linear time because it's got to copy the first. It's got to copy the second. It's got to copy the third, right? It doesn't take linear time because I say so. It takes linear time because you look at it and you're like, oh, I need to copy all these things over to a new place. Each element has to get copied over. Linear time. Question? So basically it's like a process of going around. The process of? Of just like um, basically changing, or, um, getting the I don't understand. But if you need to add another something else to the array, the yeah. process of adding that yes. is that linear time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adding to an array is linear time. And like you can memorize that, but you will not be successful if you memorize that. You need to understand why that's true. Right? You need to be able to derive it in a conversation. Like if someone's like, if you're in an interview and they're like, Hey, how fast is resizing in? Like linear time. And then they're like, why? You need to answer that question, right? And the thing is, they're not going to ask you how fast is resizing in. They're going to ask you some totally esoteric bullshit question. And in doing so, you, you'll need to be like, mm, you know, this won't work because I'll need to resize this array and that will cost linear time. And they'll be like, check. You understand? That's how it's going to work. Question in the back. Yes, it's exactly. That's such a good analogy, dude. I was talking about that. Everybody hears an analogy. <laughs> so it's like, imagine that you have an apartment and it's full of furniture, right? It's full. And you need to, you bought a new piece because you're addicted to, to like IKEA. It's a wonderful place and you, you love the meatballs and you come home with another lamp and you cannot fit it in your apartment. So you move everything out of your apartment to a slightly bigger apartment that fits all your stuff plus the lamp. Right? Does that make sense? And so, whereas the link list is like, hey, I have an apartment, very small apartment for each piece of furniture. And, and when I have a new piece of furniture, I just rent another very small apartment and I put that new piece in there. Right? Let's not, don't take these analogies too far. Okay? <laughs> these analogies are just to help you. Like, they're not perfect, nothing's perfect. But I like that a lot because it makes you feel like, it, it, makes, it makes it clear why it's linear time. Right? Because it's not linear, like, like, like it's something that I really want to beat into your head. Because I feel like I get this a lot when I teach. It's like, Ben said it's that way, that's why it's that way. No. Right? It's that way because I want you to be like, oh, I see why it's linear. Like, the, the thing that I want to hear is not like, oh, it's linear time because you said. I'm going to be like, oh, it's linear time because it's like moving everything in the apartment. And I'm like, yes, thank you. You understand? It's constant time because you don't touch your existing apartments when you have lots of little apartments. You just call up the landlord and you're like, hey, I need another one. It's like, or maybe you think this is like a micro storage, like a mini, mini storage. Right? Where you've got like these just like little like uh, peel boxes. You open it up, you put the thing in, close it, and there's one thing in each. You get a new thing, you buy a new one, you put it in that. That's a linked list. Right? Whereas an array is like an apartment that's a fixed size. And if you want to get a if you want to add this furniture, you have to move all your furniture up to a new bigger apartment. Right? And you can see how the moving apartment is slow, right? And you can see that like just getting a new box and putting that furniture in the new box and not touching the old boxes is fast. Right? 
But if someone was like, hey, you have all these boxes of shit, give me the fifth thing. And they're like, I don't, I don't know which one's which. I can go to the first one, and the first one, there's a thing in there, and there's also a little note that says, hey, the second box is box 75. And there you go. So you go to box 75, and you open it, and there's a thing in there, and there's a little note that says, the, the next box is box 12. And there you go. And you go over to box 12. Right? And not every box is yours. And when you go to the, the post office, many of the boxes are other people's, right? But you have a lot of boxes because you have a lot of shit. And in each box is the thing that you need to keep there and a note telling you where the next box is. And that's what this pointer is. It's a note telling you where the next box is. There's a question on the side. Oh, the, the last, the last, oh, I guess. Accessing that uh, Accessing what? Like the, the last, uh, I guess, no box. The last item. Um. So, okay, so that's a good question. Um, let's pretend for now, although there's a lot of nuance here, that the first element and the last element of the linked list are instant time. But everything else is going to be linear with respect to how far away it is from the first to the last. And we're going to learn some nuance here. Question in the back. I think, like, uh, a good analogy would be imagine you have a note, and instead, you know, you have the address of the first box and the address of the last box. Yeah. The, 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 the way, depending on the way you put the link list, the like ideal way is where you have a sentinel. And the sentinel means it's basically the box who's responsible for keeping track of the other boxes. And it uh, has a pointer to the first and a pointer to the last. It might also have the length. That's a useful thing. Very often you will be like, how long is this link list? And you're like, oh my god. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, no, okay, it's six. And that's like slow. Wouldn't you like to know how long it is without having to check every box? So just put that number in the sentinel. So the sentinel has two, three notes in it, right? It doesn't have any goods in it. It just has three notes. The address of the first, the address of the last, and the length. Um, and the length could be zero. And with a good sentinel, the address of the first and the address of the last is the address of the sentinel. Oh shit, what are you not? Okay, we're not gonna write about that. <laughs> I think there's like there's like some there's some really, really cool, 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 cool shit we can do with link lists. Um, but I think that we need to just do the, the dumb shit first. You know, let's let's just keep it cash today. Um, and I can plug. Was there another question? Is that a stretch or a question? I feel like there was a question. So, is on like with this example, is adding an element to a array always linear time, or like if if that was if that was free, it's a constant then? Right. So okay. So you hear this ridiculously good question. He said, "Well, wait a minute. What if the space next to it is free? Then maybe it wouldn't be a linear time." And the answer is, this is a very common thing that, that computers will do. Is that you'd be like, hey, give me an array of like five, and like, yeah, no worries. It gives you an array of like six, you know? Or you want to have an array of like, array of like ten. And then you can say, like, oh, actually, I want it a little bigger. And it's like, yeah, no worries, I got you. And that's the responsibility of the operating system, like Mac or Windows, is doing that for you. Right? Mac or Windows is managing your memory. Or Java, the virtual machine. Or Chrome, right? Chrome is managing the memory of your JavaScript. Because Chrome is running a lot of different tabs. And it doesn't want one tab. Like if you open Gmail and it's working great, then you open a tab to like my favorite website and it just starts using up all your RAM. You don't want your computer to die, you don't want Gmail to die, right? So it's the job responsibility of the process manager to like keep track of that stuff. And yes, very often you can resize an array in constant time because it's already actually that big. And so that's an optimization that exists. But again, we're talking about computer science, right? So we're trying to understand these concepts. And then, you know, these things that I'm telling you, they're like, yeah, it's true, it could be constant time because there could be extra space. These are like individual optimizations that can happen on the operating system level. But the fundamental design of an array is such that it is possible that every single array of resize takes linear time. It's not guaranteed, right? It's possible that all of them take constant time. But big O is worst case. When we say big O, we mean worst case. I mean the, the lower bound of the worst case. Okay.
So anyway, linked lists. Uh, we talked about this. Blah blah blah. Here's another cool picture of that. Twelve to one three. Okay. So this is now we're getting into the money. Now we're getting into the really fun stuff. Okay. So the way that that you build a, that you build a linked list is these objects. These are JavaScript objects. These are nodes that have on them different properties a value. And a next. Okay? So when I draw these boxes, I am literally describing a class, a JavaScript class. Do you see the relationship? This class has two fields, value and next. This box has two things in it, value and next. Okay? I'm going to draw the value and next on. Okay? So now we're actually using code to build this thing. So, um, so if you want to make a node one, there you can make a node one, you can make a node two, you can make a node three. Notice how these nodes don't talk to each other at all. So in this example here, we have now chained them. So right here we just we made node one, we made node two, we made node three. These nodes aren't interacting with each other. You can see in a comment, one, the next pointer of this node is null. So they're not actually a link list, they're just three nodes standing out in the ocean. Now, here we made our three nodes and we said node one's next is node two, node two's next is node three. Now one points to two and two points to three and three points to null. See that? So we made, we made a node, one, we made a node two. We made a node three. And they all they're not linked. And then we said one dot next is two, two dot next is three. Now they're linked. See that? It's offline. We're doing it. We're doing it together. Um so this is kind of a linked list, but it's pretty shitty, right? Tedious is the word that um, uh, Stone used, which I think is a really good word. It's not, this doesn't feel natural, right? This doesn't feel like an array where it's like array.add, array.push, array.pop. It doesn't feel like a stack, push, pop. It doesn't feel like a queue, and q, q, q. It doesn't feel nice, right? So let's make it feel nice. So we are going to make an abstract data structure. What is that? Click on it, we can see it's gonna it's gonna be this class that maybe I need even taken. Is this have you seen this yet? Yeah, you have. Yeah, did you see this? In the movie, do you guys remember? Do you folks remember the movie theater example? No, you don't. You didn't see this. Um. Let's not go too deep into this. Um, I just, I mean, we only have 45 minutes left, and I want to say focus. So, um, so basically, this abstract data structure is something that, that gives us a nice, fluffy, soft, syntactic sugar that we can use to interact with the, with the data structure so that we can do things like add or remove or get me the third element or whatever. And it all just kind of works, right? What's up? Yeah, sure. It's, yeah, it's like blueprints. Sure. Um, so, what do we want to do? What do we want our links? So these are these nodes, right? But we don't want to interact with nodes. We want to interact with a link list, just like we want to interact with an array, right? So this is exactly what we were talking about before. This sentence, right? This link list class is going to be our, our sentence, okay? And it's going to have a reference to the head. And let's also give it a reference to the tail as well. It's going to be able to add. It's going to be able to remove too. It's going to be able to keep track of how many. Remember I talked about length. That's what this one is. And it's going to be able to traverse and find elements. Okay. So I'm going to give you this. And I think we should do an exercise. I feel like we have, um, I've talked too much. I'm going to use an exercise. 
Um, so I'm going to leave this up here, and I want um, I want y'all to write push. So I think what you need is you need this node, this node class here. So copy so copy this node class down into your editor, whatever it is, REPL or Visual Studio Code or whatever. Copy this node class down, and then copy this link list class down. And I want you to add to the link list class the push method. Three, two, one, go. Feel free to talk to your partners. Let me get an awesome one. Go, you have five minutes. Five minutes to write the push method. And I'll leave so you don't fall apart. No pressure, I'll be on. Let's go with not yet. Uh, I want, you know, we want to keep it simple for you. And this link list has a pointer to the tail. And when you have a pointer to the tail, not very helpful if it doesn't have a backwards pointer. But for now, these nodes right here, these nodes that we defined, they don't have a, a previous. They only have a next. So let's stick with that. But I think what you're getting at is, wouldn't it be nice if a node had a value, a next, and a previous? And the answer is absolutely, they always do. The only reason we have another previous here is just to keep it simple for you as we're learning. Um, these are called singly linked lists, and they have a previous, they're called doubly linked lists. It's very common. It's, um, it's very rare to have a singly linked list. Doubly linked list is much more common. Do you have a question? Yeah, Is this shit going up on YouTube? <laughs> Damn, now my face is going to be all close to the position. It's going to be a weird moment. They love cussing. I want you to write a method called push. Well, when you call it, it, it adds a note to this thing list. Is that, that's how what we're doing? Um, like before that class, so we have this. Yeah, you need to, yeah, you're going to need this. You're going to need this class note. Okay, and also the, the new about it? Actually, okay. Yeah. And this? No, this you don't need. Okay. No, this is an example of like, does not suck? Let's do it better, and we're, this is the way to do it better for the link list class. Right. Okay.
I take this quietness to mean that everybody understands everything perfectly and it's right and good to me, or nobody understands anything at all, they're too afraid to talk to their neighbors. Okay. Feel free to talk to neighbors. We're going to reconvene in a couple minutes. We're going to have a few more times.
may have variable. Call it LL or whatever. It's probably LL for me. Structure takes a value. No, see, see how the new constructor takes a value? Does the this constructor do a value? Yeah, 
Because this node is getting added to the front. Okay, sure, is that what you want to do? Yeah. To the beginning. Oh, shit, dude, I, I misread. Good job. My own division's wrong. Your own division's right. Okay, so we want this thing to get added to the, the front, right? So if we want it to get added to the front, then the old front better be the second element now, right? What used to be the first element should be the second. And this new element should be the first, right? So therefore, the new nodes next should be this time. Is everyone following this logic? If you're confused at all, I highly recommend drawing a box. Like draw a box, draw three boxes, and like label them like one, two, and three, or whatever. And then make a new node and be like, okay, how do I make this the new first element? How do I make the old first element the new second element? And that this will be helpful. Okay, continue, I'm sure. Uh, this dot add equals to new node dot value? Not dot value, just new node. Right? If we did dot value, we would lose the whole right. right? We could lose the whole link list. The link list would be lost because we wouldn't be able to get the next value ever ever again. Because the value is like some string, pi, right? So we want this dot head to point. We want this dot head to point to a node. So then, in the future, when we push again, the new nodes next will be this new node, right? So like, let's say, let's say that I push. Let's say that I do const ll equals new linked list, and I say ll dot push first. Ll dot push second. Left push third. Okay? Okay. Are we ready? We're going to go through this step by step. I make a new node. Right? The first thing I do is I make a new node. What's the value of the first node that I make? Okay, so you said something that wasn't first. I don't know what it was. But it's definitely first. <laughs> I'm always interested to hear what people are saying wrong. Not because I want to make anyone feel bad for being wrong, but because I, I really love it when people are wrong, because it really helps me understand what's confusing and what's not confusing, and I can tailor my teaching to be like, okay, well, that sounds like what's confusing is the node construction. It sounds like what's confusing is the next planet, you know what I mean? So anyway, I hope I don't make anyone feel bad for being wrong, uh, but if you're wrong, please let me know. Okay, so what is the next pointer on this first element here? What is it? What's the value of it? Well, let's look. When you make a node, what's the value of the next pointer? So what's the value of this first next pointer? No. Okay. So now I'm going to, uh, and then I say this dot head. So we've got a link list down here. Here's our link list. Um, it's got a head, right? We say this dot head is equal to that new node. Oh, we're missing something. I'll take that length, right? We should do length. It's going to be equal to one, right? Make sense? Can everybody see this? Is this hard to see? I'll, maybe I'll erase, but anyway, so we made first, right? And we, we made this link list. We said this dot head is equal to the new node, awesome, and this dot length plus plus, so it went from zero to one. Cool, right? Now we're going to push second. Okay, what's the first thing we do when we push? We create a new node, right? And this syntax, this is not link list syntax, it's just regular JavaScript. When you want to make a class, you say, const variable name equals new class constructor value. It doesn't necessarily need a constructor value. Link list doesn't take a constructor. But node does, right? So we make a new node. Second. Right? And then we say, 
nuno.next equals this.head. So here's nuno.next. Here's this.head. It points to this. So we're going to do that. See how the, the, like this.head and, th and second.next are the same thing. Right? And then we say this.head is equal to new node. So we're clobbering the value of this.head. We're making a point like that. And then we increment length. Make sense? Question? No. Uh, yes and no. Can we go backwards a little bit this way? Um, can we push the first one? Um, line number five. This.head. Is that equal to no? So where is no right now when you're making it equal to no? So no is that X. So that's new. X is no that X. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so when, when, at the dawn of the first day, you know, uh, God created the heaven and the earth, right? And and we are God, and we define that when a link is created, head is null, length is zero. And also tail is not too. Oh, so this is this creating your containers so you can put things in. Basically. Yeah, exactly. You, you want things to be null because you want to set. When you push the first element, you want new node.nx to be null. Right. Because remember somebody asked earlier, how do you know when to stop, right? And was you that was asking, or she that asked? And what she meant by that was like, hey, how do you know if it's the last element? And the answer is, if it's if it's the next pointer is null, then there's no elements after it, right? So the first element you push, it should have a null next pointer because it's the last element. And so this behavior is actually great, where it says the new node we made dot max is equal to this dot head. It works when the array has lots of when the when the link list has lots of things in it, yeah. and it works when the link list is empty because we make a new node first, right? And then we say this thing's not next is equal to this dot head. What's this dot head? Oh, no. What's this dot head? It's null. And so that is correct. And then we say this dot head is equal to the node we made. So far, so good, right? I think the only thing missing is we also need to make this dot tail, right? We did, we're not updating tail. So we should update tail too. So we should we should probably do this. We should say this dot tail is equal, equal to null, then this dot tail is equal to what? Is empty. Is empty function. What? Can we just check if the if this is empty and that equal? Oh you instead of doing you want to do it if the length is zero? Uh, I like this. I think this is quicker. If there's no tail, then this should be your new tail, right? So you would be like, if there's no tail, this is your new tail. And then we create a new node. Second, we set its next pointer to be head, which is this. And then we set head to be it. And now we have a link list. Head points to second, second points to first. First is, has an all next pointer, so it's the end. And tail points to first, which is also the end. And then finally, we push third. We made a new node third. We set um, new node.next equals this.head, right? So this.head points to second, so new node will also point to second. Then we say this.head is equal to new node. And we say we up the length, so the length is now three. And then we say, um, is the tail at null? It's not, so don't do anything. Right, because we don't need to update the tail for adding the front. What, what is up in the tail second? No, first. The first thing we inserted is the last element, because we're inserting the front. Right, this is, this push method, what data structure does it sound like? I don't see long answer. <laughs> <laughs> we make me think of a circle. A stack. A stack. Right? Because 
the first thing in, well, there's no pop, but it feels like a stack, very much so, because the first thing that we put in is the last element of the array. So it's like, put it in, put it in, the first plate you put on your shelf is the last plate you're gonna, you're gonna see. It's at the bottom of the array, okay? So bottom of the list. I keep saying array, Okay, we got 15 minutes left. Whew! Okay, how does everybody feel? Tough, easy, hard, medium? Medium. Medium is good. This is hard stuff, and this is the second time we're hearing it, um, and we'll probably take a couple more times before I think you really absorb it, but this is the money. If you're really good at this, if you can derive the run times, like, if I spin you around in a circle and you just forget everything, but you, but you remember, like, the base knowledge of, like, what it is, but you don't remember, like, what's the runtime? If you can derive the runtime of all the operations of all the data structures, you will get a job. Honestly. Okay? That is why I'm here, because the, the ability to derive these things, it's not like, hey, once you do it, you get a job. It's like, the derivation of the performance of these things, that skill is the same skill that will make you a good programmer. They are the same. Because what it means is you understand how this thing works, and then you can extrapolate to a higher level of abstraction and say, okay, given that I know how this thing works, I can now build systems out of those components that have particular performance. Right? I can use the stack for this use case because I know that I need constant time retrieval of the most recent item that I insert. I can use a queue because I know that I need a first in, first out problem here. I'm gonna use a linked list because I know I'm never gonna access elements within the middle. I'm gonna use an array because I know I'm never gonna resize. And if you can derive the performance of these things, like, oh, I know that it's this because the array has this constant time thing, so I can build blah, blah, blah. Anyway. I'm very excited to teach you hash tables, really, is what I really, really want to teach you. But we've got a long way to go, so hopefully we're going to do really, really good for the next like five sessions, and then we're going to teach you hash tables, and that will be the happiest that you'll ever see. So get prepared for that. Um, what other questions do you have? You see how we gave this a link, and oh, yeah, this is a link. Say that again? I was going to say, like, what's stopping us from assigning each, a number to each element of the... Right, so so um, there actually is a number kind of implicitly, right? This is zero, this is one, this is two. So like, I think there'll be a, a question that's like, no dead index, right? So that's like, remember we did push today? And I think we should do append now. Append is gonna add to the end. So let me go over to my thing. So I added push, this is actually a um, let me hide it for you so that you don't copy it. Um, and let's add this push to my link list here. Um, so there is that implicit thing. It's just that unlike a array where the computer can just do math and be like, oh, I know where it starts, and I know that there's no gaps, so I can just go to where it starts, add the index, and blam, find it. And a link list, it's gotta, it's gotta like go be like, okay, are you trying to get one that's 10 from the front? And then you can go to the front, follow, 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 and keep following until I followed 10 times, and now I've got to get a 10. And so the abstraction from a customer perspective, from a user perspective, is like, oh, I can just get item at index 10. And you're gonna write that, okay? And so you're gonna write a method. So, so this link list will have numbers on every element. But under the hood, you don't need to store the number, and also you don't want to store the number. Because if you store the number, but then when you add a new element, all the numbers are shift. And that would make, what would be the performance of adding a new element if you had to update a value on every single node? What would be the performance of that? That's a good guess, though. I like that you're like, what sounds slow? Let's go with that. That's a nice slow one. Not in square. How many things do you have to touch? Everything's O of Everything. So O of? Oh, man. Right, linear time. So then, then you're basically getting what an array is, right? An array has to touch everything when, when, when you resize it, right? But a linked list doesn't. A linked list 
You only touch the new node you make. You make a fourth. I point it here. I update this. I'm done. These didn't even know. They never got updated. They never got changed. That's the power of the link list. And that's why we're here. That's why I'm teaching this. Is because this is actually a really useful data structure because very often in, in, in the world, um, like let's imagine a queue, right? A queue is often implemented with a link list or a stack as well. Um, because queues often start small and then they grow really big and then they grow small, right? Think about when you're waiting for an airplane. At first, there are zero people waiting for the airplane. And then there are one, and then there's two, and then there's 10, and then there's 30, and then there's 50, and then there's 80, and then there's 30, and then there's 20, and there's 10, and there's 30, right? And that's a very common real world thing, right? Real world, this isn't some made up bullshit, this is real world stuff. And that's why I think this is a great data structure to implement a queue. Because you want to start small, you want to grow up big, and then you want to let it get smaller. An array might not be so big. But hey, you know what? If let's say that I wanted to use an array to do a queue, what would be something that I could do to make the performance of the array good enough? Like for, for the example of, hey, I want to implement something. This is, again, okay, this, this is like a, this is an advanced question. So if this is confusing, Allow me to like rephrase it, but I think this is a really interesting and advanced question. We've now learned about a linked list, we've learned about arrays. Um, imagine if you wanted the ability to like build a queue, and you're like, oh yeah, I think this is a great way to build a queue because it grows in trees. But someone's like, you know what? I really would love it if I could use an array to build my queue. And you're like, no, nah, it's a terrible idea. Could you think of a way to use an array to build a queue where it wouldn't be a terrible idea? What, what constraints would you put in order to make it like, no, actually that would work? This is a trick question. I'm trying not to ask you a trick question, but I think this is a good one. Think about it for a second. Talk to your partners, talk to your partners. How could you use an array that you, but you'd want to still be able to resize it and not pay that whole performance cost? What could you do? Talk to your partners, talk to your partners. What are you thinking? Think out loud. What if you just like put the right size? I want you to think about the real world. I want you to think about the real world. Real world. Okay. <laughs> We talked about arrays, we talked about link lists. We know that arrays are good for awesome access. And link lists are good for resizing. What if I have a real world situation where I want to have a queue, a queue that starts small, grows big, and then gets small again, like waiting for an airplane. I can obviously build up with a link list. What if someone's like, hey, can you build out with an array? Can you think of a way to build out with an array that doesn't suck? That's my question. So when we have a link list that starts off with really just a lot of very good stuff, and as it goes, it's deeper into the link list, and it goes that way. So you are a link list. Is this bad question? I'm sorry. It's a little bit of a brain test. So you know that the first one can say more. I mean, you know it's on a rail. It's not a bad question. Right. 
First person will have the right answer, then you're amazing. I love it. Ready? Set. Who's got an answer for me? Way in the back. Whoa, linkless inside the array. First of all, love it. Absolutely a thing that people do all the time. And in fact, that's how a hash table is built. I'm so excited to teach you that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, totally. So, but you're, you're getting at the answer that I was really looking for, which is like, okay, you put an uh, array inside, uh, linkless inside your array, which means you have some fixed size thing where each element can be variable size, right? And what is that representing? Like what I'm trying to solve though like, is, let, let's talk specifically about the problem of uh, modeling a queue waiting in line for the airplane, right? Long before the airplane boards, there's nobody waiting in line. Then the first person waits in line. And then eventually there's 10, 20, there's a lot of people waiting in line. Then people start to get on, right? And the queue starts to shrink. Maybe it actually grows because as people get on, we'll be like, oh shit, people are getting on and they run on the line, right? So like two people get on the plane and five people join the line. But eventually, everyone is in line, and the line starts to shrink, and it goes down to zero, the plane is boarded, it flies, right? You could build that with a linked list, but what if I wanted to build it with an array? Could I build it with an array? No. <laughs> no? No, that's the wrong answer. I definitely can. I definitely can. What do you think? What do you think? Could you reference to another array? You could reference another array. Right? Talk to me a little more about that. Many arrays of specific size. That sounds like a link list. It sounds like a link list. <laughs> so, because that, that's basically just saying, hey, in this link list, instead of having my value be one person, it's ten. Uh, that's a very common data structure called the array list. Is that thing you're describing? I want an array, a straight up array. Question or answer? Could you use a pointer? To what? Like, uh, like the way you run out of space in the array. So that's what he said, right? He's saying like have an array that like when you fill it up, you point to the next, and then right, it's the same thing. And so that's a linked list of arrays, right? Basically, that means basically instead of the value being a string, it's a little array in here. You know, you could do that, and in fact, that's a great answer, and it's really awesome that you're saying that. But that's not what I'm looking for. So you just you just want an array. That, that's yes. A good list. Yes. So when you have an array that starts with zero and just goes to whatever you want, you just remove it. Yeah, but the problem, that sucks though, because it's linear time to resize an array, right? Because what if what if the uh, end of the array, the, like what if your array is the size 100, and there's 101 people in line, I need to copy all those people to some other part of memory. It's gonna take 100 copies, right? How do I make it not suck? We're not sure, let's go. Say it loud. Say it proud. <laughs> say it loud. Say it proud. Come on. If, if you know the length, the maximum length you can fit, like if, for the airplane, like how many places there is. Airplanes have a finite capacity. This is this isn't like a this isn't like hey trick question airplanes. They're, did you say that? No. I said how do you set it though? Like how do you how can you fit that? 
How do you know how much, how big an airplane is? I mean, I'll look it up on Google. I don't know. It's like this queue is for a lot of things, right? So it's like this this solution that we're talking about it wouldn't work for Shake Shack, right? The Shake Shack line can be infinite, right? There is no bound on how long we can make the Shake Shack line, but there is a bound on how long we can make an airplane line, and that's why I said real world, right? Because this isn't like a magical thing. This is like we are solving real world problems with data structures. Data structures exist to solve real world problems. Programs exist to solve real world problems, right? I'm not teaching you programming so you can go home and be like, wow, I love programming. I'm teaching programming so you can go home and be like, wow, I love solving real world problems with programming. You understand? And that's really important. That's really important and also hopefully it motivates you. I don't know, it motivates me. But hopefully it motivates you too. And that, thank you, Orange Shirt, for fucking crushing it. What's your name? <laughs> Ahmed? Amid? Amin with an N. Thank you. Amin. Great. So, and that's, and that's what's so great about this question, right? Is that if we know, because the airplane can't have more people on it than there are seats, right? It's not. It's technically illegal. Okay. So let's let's ignore the illegal possibilities in the interest of this problem, right? And so we know probably no, probably the entire plane is not going to wait at the same time, right? Probably some people will get on before the last person joins. But in the absolute worst case, a 200-person plane is going to have a 200-person line. So if I make my array of like 200, and I keep track of the length somewhere else, right? I just have a variable called length. I can now encode the queue as an array because I know the size, right? It still kind of sucks because I have to like, I have to like uh, shift, like when I remove somebody from it, I have to like shift everything over and that's N. But you can do even better than that because instead of removing them, what you can do is you can have two pointers, a pointer to the front and a pointer to the back and they'll point to the same place at the, at the beginning because there'll be no one in the line. And then you add some line and you move that pointer. And you move that pointer as you add people. And then when you remove people from the line, you just move the pointer to the left. And then you, no, it's not a link list though. Because the data is staying in the same place, you understand? Think about it like, it's like this contiguous array, it's just keeping track of two numbers that move along the array. And if you use a fixed size, even if you get to the very like end, and you wanna go, you wanna like, um, you wanna add more, but you're at the end, you can just rotate back to the beginning. So sweet. So sweet. Programming is fucking great. I love it. Um, anyway, the point is, is that there are clever solutions, and a lot of these clever solutions, they come out of being clever, but they also, more importantly, often, come out of understanding the domain. Being like, oh, you know what? This thing has a fixed size. You can't fit more than X people on a plane. You can't have more than this many people. Or, oh, you know what? It has to be infinite, because it's the Shake Shack line. I can't possibly use an array here. I need to use numbers. Okay, so is this all making sense? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think we'll probably do this class again. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep doing link lists until we get it. Thanks for your time, everybody. Also, if you have any feedback from me, please give it to me. I would like your feedback. Thanks. I don't know why. Can I have to finish on this one more? Uh, so the CSF assignment is due on Friday at midnight. Um, so we don't have any other assignments like pending. Uh, we just decided to give you more time. Uh, if you're done, that's great. If, if not, you can just keep working on it. Uh, so in order to have on Saturday, we're having a professional skills workshop. Uh, I'm going to ask the after for a little bit. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. That's it. I'm <laughs> <laughs>